we are uh, working in Poland. Uh, we are working in a project uh, which is funded by the National uh, Science Center, Polish National uh, Science Center. Uh, and it's called the uh, uh, Cultural and National Heritage of the Białowieża Forest. Later I will show you where exactly is this forest. And uh, uh, the fact, the point is that this is uh, one of the last or even the last uh, forest that can be considered as a prime view in the European temperate zone. So it's a very uh, specific uh, type of uh, area. And during uh, three years of lasting of the project, uh, we would like to uh, make uh, some few things and uh, investigation among the whole the Białowieża forest and including the Białowieża National Park as well as uh, some archaeological investigation with the use of the modern techniques, mainly uh, LiDAR data and of course the wide range of uh, specialist analyze, analyzes also from the uh, field of uh, the natural science which is also a uh, a very important uh, part of uh, our project and uh, the methods uh, which uh, we are using uh, starting from archaeology so first of all these are the uh, non-destructive methods the first of of course archive work the historical maps and text uh, and the I think that the most important thing which is uh, LIS data lighter stuff uh, which let's say uh, mm, show uh, the you know real potential of, of of let's say the archaeological resources in the place like uh, Białowieża forest uh, uh, also some standard things like uh, verification of, of the things that we spotted on the LS data uh, by the field walk uh, later some standard things also geophysical survey and uh, then we are uh, choosing some uh, proper sites to make some um, more destructive things like uh, uh, test trenches and drillings uh, and the second uh, let's say part of the project us is uh, conducting and cooperation with the specialists from the uh, natural science from also biology uh, geography, uh, botanic analysis, palynology, dendrology, anthropology, uh, C14, uh, physical anthropology, archaeozoology, and a few other. Uh, so uh, here you can see uh, where is the Białowieża forest. It's in the eastern Poland. Uh, all of the area of the Białowieża forest it's about 1,500 uh, square kilometers, but it's divided between the Poland and. Uh, and Belarusia, and only a small part of the Polish, let's say, uh, half of the Białowieża forest is, let's say, strictly protected in, uh, in the Białowieża National Park, and it's related with also various, uh, let's say, political problems, which also touch, unfortunately, uh, our project. And uh, okay, I, will, I think that I'll just skip the description of the LiDAR because it's, uh, I think it's obvious. Uh, but uh, the fact is that, let's say, the, the LiDAR just uh, uh, recovered the Białowieża forest from the archaeology because uh, before the uh, conduction of our project, there was about 150 archaeological sites known uh, on the Polish side of, of, of this forest. And uh, when we made, uh, when we start our project, when we start to search for uh, for some archaeological features in in this forest, we spot a lot of more. Uh, it's uh, about 1,700 uh, archaeological sites which were uh, verified uh, on the field. Of course, the the fact that we are basing uh, so strongly, so so much on the uh, library data, is also related uh, with uh, many problems. And of course, the uh, quality of, of, of the resources of the data. Well, we have this uh, IT system for the country's protection against extreme, extreme hazards, which covered almost all the surface of, of Poland, uh, which uh, is uh, like uh, four points per square meter, which is, well, it's okay for our college, but it could be, of course, better, but we were happy that we could use it. But the thing is that only half of the forest uh, was, was covered uh, by, by this project at the moment, uh, when we start our project, uh, so we were there was also uh, another half was covered by by the data uh, made by uh, the Institute of Forest Research, 
and they have a better quality like uh, six points per one meter but they don't want to uh, share us with the data even though that it was a totally public uh, thing and they just said no because they prefer to hire their own archaeologists uh, to just found actually 20,000 of sites which is uh, something uh, amazing on this uh, quite limited area so because of that we were forced to uh, ask I mean to, to audit in a GSPRO company um, some of our own uh, LiDAR data from, from, from selected by us areas uh, which have let's say some interesting from our point uh, archaeological sites and uh, features well the average flight uh, was uh, 450 uh, meters uh, which allow us to, to let's say to use the footprint of a laser beam like uh, 15 centimeters wide and the uh, average de density of a point cloud was uh, 14 points per square meter so it was uh, a very very precise uh, thing very precise data very uh, useful and yeah, here we can see uh, the next few slides is, uh, let's say, a visual comparison of, of the star. Here is the, the, the ESOC thing that I told you at the beginning, the, the four, four point per uh, square meter, and let's say the local dominance uh, model, we use it also on the ESOC. And here is our thing, this is the, the same thing, uh, the, the same, let's say, features, and even, you know, if you look at that, it, it, you can notice that it's much more uh, precise. Uh, of course, we could spot those barrels before that, you know, but uh, now we could spot much, much uh, more uh, different features. And the fact is that, uh, I mean, the area of the Biovisual Forest from the, let's say, geomorphic point of view is uh, uh, kind of characteristic. It's uh, quite flat because of the glaciation process. So uh, let's say it's not so diversified, the altitude. Mm -hmm. Of, of the the is not so so big so the local dominance was very useful if you wanted to spot some let's say specific features like for example Celtic fields which were unknown before the introduction of, of, of lighter data in Poland but now they appeared and uh, it's it's almost impossible to, to, to spot them in the in the field sometimes we can but we need to know what we are searching for and here you can uh, here we have uh, other examples of the feature I will, in the uh, next slides, I will describe them more uh, frequently. So we notice that it is obvious to say that the, the GSPRO data taken from the GSPRO was much, much better. And after, you know, recently also the, the ESOC data, these four points per uh, square meter also appeared for the, 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 the rest of the area of the Polish part of the Białowieża forest. So we are able to, to let's say, we have uh, let's say 100% of coverage of the live data for the whole uh, our area of interest and of course basing on the uh, results of the analysis of the LIDAR data we might just surface survey with a uh, GPS, uh, GPS device of course the problem of the accuracy is, is important but the thing that we just walk uh, through the forest and it's quite dense forest and the accuracy of, of our uh, equipment was about um, five meters and this means that each feature which was visible on the LiDAR was also in let's say the range of our uh, site. Of course it was a bit problematic we used the local dominance model which you know even spots the, 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 the smallest difference in, in the relief so it was sometimes it was a kind of uh, hard to to let's say to detect those features in, in, in the field and sometimes it was impossible so these were uh, negative verification and later we just uh, you know after we verified uh, after the verification of the sites we, we conduct some uh, let's say geophysic uh, things but uh, well the thing is that uh, in this kind of condition uh, conditions I mean uh, let's say dense forest condition uh, let's say the results of the geophysics, both magnetometry and uh, ground penetration radar, wasn't uh, satisfied with, with the spot. And, and, and uh, I know that there are some other geophysical uh, researches in the Indian Ocean for the net, some like, even uh, wider area of of, uh, of those researches, but I, I I'm not sure if they found also anything interesting. And of course, the excavations we we conduct and we just choose the, the most, let's say, promising sites and we made the excavation. This is, let's say, the, uh, the, the one of the barrels from the uh, medieval period uh, with the remains of, of 
of lady uh, bones and uh, we found the best, let's say, artifacts there. Usually it's nothing, let's say, interesting. Um, uh, I mean, not so many interesting artifacts in the, the Białogierza because this, this area was a kind of periphery uh, almost for all of the time of prehistory and uh, early history of the Polish area. But the fact is that, you know, still, still if we have a Portuguese it's uh, it's uh, very important, and uh, as you can see, the chronology of, of uh, investigated uh, features uh, is quite uh, different. I mean, the oldest known it's like from the early Iron Age, but there are some limited number of uh, even even older. Some uh, we are finding some Flintstones from the Neolith, but it, it's uh, in general it, it's. It's rare, and some I'll just show you some example of features. Uh, like uh, besides some obvious things, like let's say barrels, uh, typical barrels with burials. We have a couple pies, which could be uh, quite frequently misunderstood with, with, with uh, let's say uh, burials. Uh, uh, but the fact is, uh, the Belvedere is a specific area because it was let's say protected from, from let's say uh, 15th, 16th century because this area was considered to be as a, some kind of uh, area for uh, hunting uh, made for uh, Polish kings at the beginning and uh, after uh, partitions also for the Russian Tsar so this area was protected because they wanted to keep the animals inside and this creates some, some good uh, let's say uh, let's say the forest economy was uh, just was absent there in, in a big way, so this cause that uh, we were able now we are able to to spot many uh, interesting uh, let's say features which are mainly absent in, in other forests in in, in in Poland. And here we have the example of dark houses, which are uh, very uh, interesting objects. And most of them were known before the introduction of the light and data because they are very characteristic and it's quite easy to 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 to, to find them in the in the field. And some of them are really impressive, and of course, like uh, we might say, standard barrels. Uh, usually, they are empty, especially the one from the early medieval, because it was related with the uh, burial right. They just you know throw their remains on the uh, surface of, of, of the barrel. And, and a very interesting thing: the traces of uh, prehistoric fields, the yeah, so-called uh, Celtic fields, which, as I said before, they were totally unknown. Uh, before the introduction of, 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 of LIDAR and suddenly appears quite a lot of them, uh, especially in the Białowieża forest, which uh, uh, yeah, we could find uh, whole the, the systems. And uh, this is, uh, well, the, we suppose that it might be uh, a stronghold, however, it's located in the Białowieża National Park and uh, we don't have access to make some uh, invasive uh, researches, unfortunately, because the, the let's say the authorities of, of of the park are very, let's say, uh, they don't want to allow us to enter. Uh, yeah, and uh, well, even some more contemporary things like trenches from the the, the war trenches, uh, some sand exploitations uh, places, and uh, more more uh, let's say uh, contemporary uh, settlements. And this is interesting because these are the budget sets, uh, places for these nice animals, which. And appear not really nice if you, uh, you know, for example, walk in the area. Uh, they live there, and we make some cooperation with the Institute of the Biology of Mammals in the Belgium. And we are just searching using the lidar data, the the places of, of their homes. They are creating some really sophisticated uh, uh, sets, like some small uh, small uh, animal cities and. Uh, Let's say that the, the, this GSPRO LIDAR data allow us to, to detect them even more because okay we, we can see some hills but uh, in the let's say four point uh, accuracy uh, uh, analysis data it was sometimes impossible to, 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 to trace all of this stuff all these small holes and now it's, it's much more easier and it's also a very let's say promising. Uh, well, case study, and later we are just, of course, storing our uh, results of, of the lidar detection, of the uh, verification of the um, remotes of the of the geophysics, and uh, let's say our also excavations and uh, natural analysis. We store in the GIS data, so 
with, I mean, some, some let's say, a regular uh, template of, of our, let's say, steps of uh, implementation. And well, this, uh, how our, let's say, results looked. Uh, actually, we uh, one month ago we made uh, let's say three, uh, two week uh, uh, field survey and we just uh, investigated all of the main areas. So we may say that we cover uh, by our uh, surface survey uh, almost of our area of interest. And at this moment, we have one thousand seven hundred twenty three verified uh, verified on the field site. I know that there are some uh, colleges that claim that there is. Uh, they found uh, 20,000 of uh, archaeological sites on this area, which is, uh, I think, uh, uh, overreacted, uh, been much overreacted. And, well, let's say the problems with which we are meeting, the chronology of uh, sites and the fact, for example, the function of barrows and moles, for example, even from the point of, of, of like the data, it's impossible to, to let's say, set, say what's the chronology, even that sometimes after the excavation, we have the problems, but if we, don't uh, let's say detect any material, any uh, pottery. It's it's quite of of of, uh, of difficult, and uh, well, limited accuracy of our data. This is uh, something obvious, and uh, uh, verification of the results of not not invas non-invasive methods are also difficult in this this let's say conditions that we have, and difficult access to some area of. of of uh, our interest and the questions, the, well, as I said before, chronology, typology uh, of the barrows, interpretation of field system, uh, and the other thing, the cooperation of the forester with the local authorities, which is also quite of, uh, of, of difficult. And some, let's say, problems related with the implementation of the whole project and its dissemination of, of, of the data that, I mean, the information that we receive among the local society and the conclusion. Some, let's say, this is very interesting uh, area of interest, and especially that, as I said, uh, the light will give totally new possibilities to, 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 to let's say, to make this investigation. And uh, this is the last year of, of our project, and I hope that, that next year CAA I'll be able to show you some more final results. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you have some short question, you can ask me. And